Robert back here, Bluegrass Bushcraft. Okay, today we're going to do something a little different from the norm from my channel. Instead of bushcraft, camping, or lanterns, uh, we're going to be uh, changing the brakes on my old Silverado. Most people, when they change their brakes, they take it to a garage and pay way overpriced labor. Well, I'm not one of those people. Uh, call me a redneck if you will. I'm going to do this right here in the driveway of my trailer hood. You're going to need a few basic tools. I'll put a list of the tools you're going to need in the description box. And if you have an air compressor and impact gun, use them because it'll make your life so much easier. But if you don't, you can use the tar tool that comes with your vehicle and the jack. And um, I will be using a hydraulic jack. Once again, if you got something like that, use it. It'll save me some back braking. Okay, once again, tool's not necessary. Just saves a little time. Speed wrench. And I'm going to need a, I think that's a 7 8 socket for this. That's where the speed wrench comes in handy. You don't want to use an impact on these. You want to remove your hubcaps. Okay, for this process, <clears throat> I am going to loosen these lug nuts. I'm not going to take them off. I'm just going to loosen them while the truck is on the ground. Once we loosen them, then we can jack the truck up. And make sure you uh, chalk your tars when you do this. Once again, I'm using an impact gun. You don't have to use this. You can use your tar tool. But um, impact guns save some time. Okay, I forgot I had these tires put on at Walmart when I bought them, and I haven't had these wheels off here since. So, my little in impact gun's not going to break these. So, we're going to have to go back to the old way. Okay, like I said, you can use your tire tool for this, but I'm not going to dig mine out. I'm going to use a socket, heavy-duty ratchet, and a cheater bar. Slide the cheater bar right over my ratchet handle. Gives you a long extension. just tell you I hate Walmart with a passion the only reason I have my tires put on there is because they beat Amazon's pricing by a long way I don't like shopping there I don't like delivering there I definitely don't like them putting on my tires there is no sense whatsoever putting lug nuts on that tight uh, that one I had to put both feet on the uh, cheater bar bouncing and I'm a big old boy like to never broke that one. You want to position your jack under the frame. If you're using a hydraulic jack, make sure you get the valve tight and clockwise.
you can see I've got it off the ground just a little clearance you don't need to bring this thing two foot off the ground just just high enough to slide your wheel please make sure you got on your parking brake and got your wheels chalked especially if you jacking up the rear end okay now we can go back to the impact to save some time remove the rest of these lug nuts Okay, I've turned my steering wheel as far to the right as possible to give me plenty of access to get to the back side of this brake caliper. On the back side, you want to see two bolts. One at the top, you see a little rubber boot behind it, and one at the bottom of the caliper. I think those were 11 sixteenths, and um, we're going to loosen both of those. Once again, I'm going to use this cheater bar on my ratchet. Should be able to turn that with no problem with ease right there. I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom. You could probably do that without the cheater bar. But the leverage makes all the difference in the world. No fighting it. are broke we can just turn them out by hand okay now those are out you can probably slide that off by hand by grabbing it if you not fall hammer or crowbar or something you can just reach in there the top and the bottom and just pry but I mean there's no need in prying some of them a little tight but this one's coming off I'm not going to need to pry just keep working it it'll come right loose okay from this point I like a piece of bar a clothes hanger or something I'm just going to bar that right around there and I'm going to pull this back out of my way hook that back there so I don't have all that weight on that brake line just dangling that just takes the weight off that brake line okay I hope this video turns out the sun's coming out I can't really see my screen but from this point you can see you can pull that with your hand you can use a flathead screwdriver just get in behind that pry out it's that simple you can see I got just about max life out of these I think my other side don't think it's this one I think my other side is rubbing metal to metal could be this one one of them you know that one looks pretty thin so uh, it's that simple same thing on the other side stick it in pry away from the brake rotor and they slide right out yep don't get much thinner than that okay the uh, new brakes are gonna come with these new uh, I guess they're glides they help the brake pad glide back and forth brackets should be able to just pull them out Once again stick the screwdriver in behind it give it a little push she's gone The other one back in, same way that one came out. It's that simple. Didn't show up. They got little uh, clips there. Kind of bend in, and those clips will slide right in behind that uh, bracket.
Okay, I watched when I took off my little thin one that come off the back side. This is the one that had the little uh, sensor riveted on there. Comes through and rubs on that uh, rotor to let you know when your brakes are getting thin. But in this case, that sensor miserably failed. As you can see it hasn't rubbed. And um, I didn't get no warning these brakes were getting thin until they were almost gone. Okay, the, the U-shape will go in toward the spindle, which means your little center is going to be at the top. You start both ends in at the same time. Maybe. There we go. Slide them right in there. Now we can put the outside one on. There's only one way you can put these on so you can't really mess up. Just line up the top and the bottom. Slide it in place. I didn't show it. I lift that plate off there. A little bit of that brake grease right on the back there. It don't take much. Okay, the next step, the garage will use a special tool which you can buy at any local auto parts. I don't own one. I don't plan on owning one because I don't need one. I mean. Here you can use a large C-clamp in your old brake pad. Works just as well, probably even better than the tool you buy. A little heavier duty. Okay, this is a uh, twin cylinder. So I'm just going to apply that, lay that brake shoe right back down in there. Right across those cylinders. take my C-clamp and I'll put it right dead center between the two cylinders tighten it down now you just tighten that C-clamp down until you draw those cylinders all the way back inside or the pistons back inside the cylinder or how you want to say that just need to compress them back in so it will slide back on over top of the thicker brake shoes because these are adjusted to the uh, thin brake shoes that's wore out. Press the pistons all the way back flush to the chamber. Well, that should slide right over top of our brake shoe. Okay, now we can just pick that up, spin it back around. I'd have to take your finger and mash in on the little uh, cylinders there. Top and one at the bottom where your bolts go back in there. And she's on. Now we can put our bolts back in. I have to wiggle them just a little bit to get them to line up. So the bottom one started. Now we can turn our ratchet to tighten. You don't have to put a lot of pressure on these, just snug them down pretty good.
Okay, now we can put the wheel back on. Okay, just for speed, I'm going to use my impact gun again, but I'm not completely tightening them down. I'm just snugging them down. Now we can uh, release the pressure from the jack. And now we can do our final tightening. Same process. Always go to the opposite lug nut. Top one. Bottom one. Second to the right. Second to the left on the bottom. One on the right. One on the left, and that's it. I didn't use no torque wrench. If you all want to use a torque wrench, you can look up the specs and do it yourself. But I've done this a lot of years, and uh, I just go by feel. Those things don't have to be over tightened like Walmart does it. Now we put our lug nut back on, hubcap. Definitely don't want to over tighten these. Just use the same process. One side to the next. We're just going to snug these down because they are plastic and they will strip. Yeah, I'm not going to film the other side. Just the one side. I mean, the other side is the exact same process. There's no difference. Once you complete that, the only thing left to do is you have to get in, start your truck, pump your brakes until they build pressure back up. Okay, they're coming back up on their own now. Pressure again. I hope this video helps somebody out there. I know I wish when I was young, we didn't have the internet. And when I was young, I would give anything to have videos like this. Uh, my father-in-law taught me quite a bit. Appreciated him for that. If it wasn't for him, I mean, I wouldn't have a clue. But um, gets the job done. Saves you a lot of money. All right. If y'all like these kind of videos, you know the routine. Like, share, subscribe. God bless.